Hey everyone, uh, welcome to our talk, Peribolos, GitHub Management Amit's Growth and Kubernetes Project. My name is Priyanka Sagu. Um, I work at SUSE as a Kubernetes Integration Engineer. I'm a technical lead for SIG Contributor Experience as well as a GitHub Admin for the Kubernetes Orgs. Hello, and I'm Jason Braganza. I'm an IT consultant to small and medium businesses, helping them with the cloud pivots. I also help as a Kubernetes new membership coordinator, helping out with the request for and welcoming folks to as org members, Kubernetes org members on GitHub. So let's start with uh, an agenda for today. We look at why we need Parabolus. We meet, Parabol uh, we meet Parabolus and look at the role of Parabolus in the Kubernetes project. We see Parabolus in action with a small deep dive, and we do a little recap. So let's go. Why Parabolus? Let's begin with the story of a small org. Uh, in the beginning, there are a team of about five folk. There's our CEO, uh, three engineers, and a consultant for non-core tasks. We use GitHub. We have an org to collaborate. Six months later, we have grown our engineering team by two. We add them to our org, and hey, welcome to the team. A year later, we have a, a lot more engineers and we split our org into two teams and we enable the requisite permissions and get on with our work. Another year later, I cannot count anymore, but we're growing. It's getting a little out of hand, but the DevOps folks are on top of it now that the size has increased too. They're more functional teams now and things need to be changed all the time, but there's nothing we can't handle. A couple more years later, we get funding, and then there's utter chaos. We're growing explosively, and the teams are growing to match. There are more folks coming and going. There are all sorts of uh, requirements to the GitHub org, and they're all in flux. Stuff needs to be changed on a daily basis. We're holding this jigsaw patchwork puzzle together with duct tape and all sorts of scripts, page shell or Python. But if the fates ever deem otherwise, this whole edifice can shatter and fall apart very easily. That's where we look for something strong and stable and shiny, and our solution is Parabolus. Let me also illustrate this same scenario with another story. A while back, I, work, I worked as a medium-sized uh, workshop, uh, web shop, and I was put in charge of moving the whole org, teams, and repos, and all, uh, along with the pipelines from GitLab to GitHub. The team was a sub 30-member uh, team. Uh, they were prolific with their work, and I had about seven functional teams on 100 repos. And I got it done. The whole uh, all came over. Everything worked fine. But I did the whole thing by hand. It took me close to a fortnight. It took me copious amounts of coffee, late nights, empty moments of trial and error, and an ungodly amount of GitHub uh, rate limiting. So the, it was a similar friends, uh, similar scenario that our friends at the Kubernetes project faced when they came up with Parabolus. Chris, uh, Christoph is here. <laughs> Hello. Uh, and uh, he and Eric Feta gave the OG talk on Parabolus right here five years ago. So here's a few screenshots where Christoph describes just one scenario filled with paper cuts. All we're doing here is adding a team, uh, creating a team and adding members. Uh, keep an eye on the click count at the bottom left. So there's one, we start with one, we try to create a team, we're up to three, we try to remove ourselves from the team, and we try to add the team members manually, and we're up to five. And by the time we're done, we're up to 10 clicks. Christoph ends with uh, repeat until 10 and fingers are, or fingers are bleeding. So I could attest to that uh, during my time, I had a whole lot of bleeding fingers. So back to me, in the role I serve now as the NMC for the GitHub, uh, Kubernetes project, I have to add members to various orgs on a near daily basis. There are a couple of verification steps that need a human, but the most important part that needs to be done flawlessly is adding a member to the right org with the right permissions every single time. And all I need to do is edit a YAML file and add an entry. That is how easy it has become. If only I had met Peribolus earlier. So let's do that. Let's go meet Peribolus with Priyanka guarding his father. So before uh, we see Parabolas in action, let's see, um, we'll see Parabolas in action with our friend Jando. But before that, what is Parabolas? 
So Perivolos is a tool simplifying GitHub management by updating all of organizations, uh, GitHub organization setting, teams, or membership through a YAML file configuration. What it means is you describe everything that you need to be configured on GitHub in a YAML format, and Perivolos takes it over from there. So let's see that in action with Jan. Let's try to install Perivolos. How we do that is our code for Perivolos, the tool itself sits inside this repo called Kubernetes slash test infra. You clone that and you build the Perivolos binary. And if the installation went well, uh, you'll have the tool available to you. You can check with Perivolos help flag to see if everything is working fine and all the flags that are available to it. Here, we have an org uh, with Jan. The org is called in org. Let's see, uh, let's try to do a few things with Perivolos on this org. First thing, let's try to export the org configuration into a YAML format. So Perivolos has a command for that, Perivolos dump, the dump flag, and you give it the name of the org followed by the GitHub token that has access to that org. And what that will do is it will extract or export the entire current configuration of the in or GitHub organization on your screen. In this case, we are putting the, that into a file called in org.yaml. What that file looks like is something like this. You have the top level key called orgs, and right under that is the name of your org, in this case, in org, followed by all the org settings, so things like you, your email address attached to the org or company or other flip-flops that you have done, for example, whether uh, this repository, this organization has repository projects, what is the default repository positions, etc. In the exported org YAML, you will also find all the admins currently on the GitHub org, followed by a list of all the members and list of all the teams. And here we we are showing on the screen, it's a team called our group and all the members and maintainers under that team as well as what the, what uh, repos that team have access to. So let's see whatever we just saw, how we utilize that in Kubernetes project. We have a lot of organization in the Kubernetes project at this point, I think it's six or seven or maybe more, and all of the organizations meta configuration or the YAML equivalent of what we just looked for in org sits inside a GitHub repo called Kubernetes slash org or git.gts.io org. That repository contains the meta configuration for all the Kubernetes GitHub organizations. Example, uh, it would contain the uh, configuration of our Kubernetes org or Kubernetes 6, CSI, etcd, IO. And that data that sits inside this repo is then consumed by Peribolos. What Peribolos does is do a reconciliation loop just like Kubernetes. What it does it, it looks at all the declared members that basically all the data that we have declared in our YAML and try to observe whether it matches the observed state or it matches this actual state of the GitHub organization. So in this case, if I have declared a few members or a list of members in my YAML, Peribolos will try to get a list of all the members from the GitHub organization. If it sees there are members listed in the YAML file who, which are not already part of the organization, it will invite them. If there are members listed uh, and if they're in, uh, Permissions needs to be escalated, it will promote them if there are members already there in the org but not listed in the Git, uh, YAML format, it will remove them. And it, this reconciliation loop will keep going on. It will do the same thing for other information that you have added in the YAML file for teams or other metadata. So with this idea in mind, Let's see Perivolos in action in Kubernetes project. So one of the things that we do with Perivolos is managing our org membership. How does that work? So here we have Jean Do. She has raised a new membership org request. This is how the template for a new org membership request look like. We need the GitHub username as well as which organization that this person is trying, uh, is, is requesting access for. 
followed by other information. So we saw here Jean is requesting access to these four repos as four GitHub organizations, Kubernetes, Kubernetes 6, Kubernetes CSI, etcdi. That's where our new membership coordinator or Jason comes in the picture. What we need to do to add Jean to these four requested repo is make some changes on our Kubernetes slash org repository. That's where we keep the uh, meta configuration. So a new membership coordinator or an MC will clone the repo, will check out to a separate branch to make some changes. In this case, Jean requested membership for Kubernetes, for example. So we'll make changes in a org YAML file for Kubernetes org. In this case, this is how the org YAML looks like. We are um, adding Jean Do in the member section of the org fi uh, YAML file in alphabetical order. Once you have made the changes, save them, add them, commit them, and repeat all the steps for the other three organizations that she requested access for. Once you have made all the changes, then you just push them back to the GitHub repo, and that, that is basically a PR. What happens when this PR is merged? This PR actually made changes to the Kubernetes org repo, aka the K org repo, which needs to be consumed by Peribolos. But where is Peribolos in the Kubernetes project? Peribolos in the Kubernetes project runs inside a CICD, our CICD infrastructure tool called Prow. But I'll not go into detail about Prow because Prow is a whole mass ecosystem of its own and very well described by this diagram from Ben Elder. Thank you. We have a talk from a past KubeCon where we discussed how to read the Prow jobs or how to um, write or navigate through the existing Prow jobs we have for Kubernetes project. But just for this talk, this is one of the Prow jobs that monitor all the changes that are happening on the Kubernetes slash org repository. So what happens when we created that PR and the PR was merged, this job, uh, uh, an instance of this job was triggered. What it did is just ran that bash script admin update.sh with some flags. But what happened is basically this peribolos command was run. What this peribolos command is doing here is we are telling peribolos here is the config path, here is a YAML file or YAML description of all our GitHub, Kubernetes GitHub organizations. Look for the information here. If you see any org membership updates or any, any changes that needs to be done related to org membership, do that with these flags. Any team updates or any team related changes or fixes needs to be done, do that with these flags. Peribolos has a few inbuilt security checks where we need to have at least a minimum five uh, admins um, available into the uh, GitHub organization at any point of time. So we are mentioning the required five admins here with these flags, followed by the GitHub token that will actually let Peribolos do any changes and the GitHub endpoints to ensure we don't meet rate limiting. And finally, we have the confirm flag. This flag will, uh, if there is a change actually uh, found between the declared YAML config as well as the current state of the GitHub organization and some update needs to be done, whether it's adding people or removing people or updating membership, if this flag is provided only then, Peribolos will do that or make that change. Um, if not, it will just do a dry run and show what changes might happen. So uh, good advice if you are using Peribolos or planning to use Peribolos, try running the commands without this flag first to understand what changes might happen. And once you are sure, uh, use the confirm flag. These are the few inbuilt safety checks we have already in place in the Peribolos uh, binary itself. Few of these are, uh, we need at least five admins at any point uh, in time in, the, in any GitHub organization. Also, there is a flag here to make sure Peribolos don't end up removing half of the organization, for example, and more. And if you need, want to understand more about the entire list of Peribolos flag, there is a link at the bottom for the documentation. 
so going back to our example when we made when we merged that pr and the pr was taken over by that peribolos job and the peribolos command was run what really happened was peribolos found okay jando is declared in the four uh, yaml files but she is not already a part of the requested four orgs so peribolos will go ahead and invite her to all this four orgs and that's what's happening here if you want to see um, what that command um, the output of that command looks like we have a test grid dashboard for that right now it's red this is a screenshot from a few days back or uh, i think the state right now is red as well and we have to meet to fix that um yeah if anybody uh, from the kubernetes community for example want to check um a certain instance of that peribolos command and fix for troubleshoot or get some information you can get the logs out with this test grid dashboard and the links are at the bottom a note peribolos is independent of the ci cd platform it runs on we are discussing peribolos in case of prow right now but it's a stand alone tool it can operate um, in any of your existing ci cd pipelines like beta action for any of the scenarios you envision for it so let's do a little recap it's been 5 years since christoph spoke on this on the stage on peribolos so what's happened since then our orgs have increased our repos have increased by a lot um our teams have grown increased in number and peribolos has grown and adopted uh, adapted to all these changes with uh, with a plum so when i told you that our team members had doubled in size like we saw over here with 2000 plus numbers i may have fibbed a bit because we recently had a little bit of spring cleaning and we removed close to 700 plus highly inactive members for security reasons uh, shout out to navrun pal who made this whole uh, scenario uh, made sure that this whole thing passed without incident but the reason i mentioned this is peribolos had to be adopted adapted to handle this courtesy navrun which made doing risky things like master removals easy another change that landed about 6 months ago gave peribolos the ability to manage team repo permissions let's look at this briefly on the left you see we have a default deny policy in restrictions.yaml if a repo is it allowed in the no amount of jiggery pokery on the right is going to help us gain access to the repository but if it is allowed then everything on the right is allowed with the members and maintainers maintainers with their respective permissions correctly done to quickly run through we are adding members to a team the steering committee team uh, there are a couple of maintainers a few members and they'll have admin access to two repos kubernetes template project and steering so you can see the results here we have the steering committee team with their members with the maintainers correctly set as well as the regular members in place and with admin access to the repos that we declared no crazy clicking involved so wrapping this all up peribolos has a kubernetes friendly design it aligns seamlessly with the kubernetes ecosystem its design ensures adaptability across diverse ci environments you can see the use of peribolos inside a kubernetes cluster over here over the years peribolos has proven itself um, it's our primary tool for managing organization settings in the project and it serves as an excellent showcase for its scalability and effectiveness in handling the inexorable growth of one of our largest open source projects and finally increasing adoption peribolos is being actively utilized in projects like knative red hat and kubeflow as well as sparking interest in other communities as well suggesting its relevance for enhancing github organization management across varied ecosystems the docs are available here as is the source this used to be our final slide but we never got around to start showing it across like three presentations so far so we bumped it up a bit this is our small reminder uh, for you to be kind to yourselves and my esteemed co speaker was the release lead for the current version of kubernetes 1.29 and we had a beautiful logo to mark the release in december said logo now has stickers we're carrying a few you can catch us after the talk if you want one and finally you can find us on the kubernetes slack you can also mail us here 
The barcode and the link to your right will lead you to our slides as well as the video for our talk, which they hopefully they'll release in the coming weeks. Thank you. Thank you so much. And if anyone wants a sticker for 129 logo, I have them and that was designed by Jason. So thank you for that. Uh, hi, sorry. Hello. Here. Here, here. Oh, yep. End of the room. <laughs> I, I have a couple of questions. Uh, if... Yep, yep, yeah. please. Um, I, I, I tapped them on my phone, so I'm sorry if you already okay. answered in the presentation. No um, You defined the GitHub token in the configuration. Yep. The GitHub token belongs to, I believe, the bot, right? And the bot will have permissions to the entire organization, right? Well, yes, um, not to the entire, right now we have a granular um, GitHub tokens thing. I have to check what exactly, um, what are the exact permissions required, but it also depends on what we are trying to do with Peribolos, um, for example. But yeah, uh, it not just, in this case, yes, it, it um, is for the board, the Kubernetes boards that we use for uh, making all the changes, but in general, it would be anybody, any GitHub um, username, a GitHub token attached to any GitHub username that will be doing the changes, for example, through Peribolos. So if I am trying to run Peribolos locally on, a, on my organization, I can use a GitHub token attached to my username. But it should be from the admin, yes. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Um, the other question I have is, uh, it looks like in the, I, I checked the repository while you were doing the presentation. It looks like the, the production YAML that uh, we use uh, has a, kind of a flat organization. There's only one route for all of the teams. Does it support children of the teams? Because that's something it's supported on GitHub. I don't think so. Um, so I, it does, I because I know like, uh, we do, I do see uh, members attached to children teams, but I think uh, Christoph is here if you want to. If I recall, I think we. So then. All right, so the, the answer was yes, in case for the recording. Um, I guess it's a field of the of the spec that was not presented. Okay, okay. Um, the last question I have is, in the reconciliation loop, if a team member is removed from the organization through the GitHub UI, how does that look like in the PR that is opened by Parabolos? Like, it, it's going to remove that user from the configuration file? Is that how the PR will look like? Uh, no. So if, for example, a member is actually declared in the YAML file and I went ahead and manually removed it from the, removed them from the UI, when the new uh, Peribolos CI job will run, it will re-add them or re-invite them. So the source of truth is, is always the, YAML the file. file. Okay, yeah. okay, good. And uh, just adding to your second question, I recall we do use child member. I think the example would be SIG release repo, um, release team. Uh, our Kubernetes release team has a lot of child teams, so we can find an example there where release team has a lot of um, sub teams defined under it. So yeah, that would be Kubernetes um, folder under SIG release, and there is a teams.yaml that will give you an example for your second question. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Hi there, sorry I joined a bit oh. late. Um, so when are we rewriting Peribolos to support GitHub apps? Sorry, uh, I did not get uh, the question. So when are we rewriting Peribolos to run with GitHub apps instead of a path token of a user? Um, Christoph, you want to take it? I did not write Peribolos. I just started using it as a GitHub admin recently, but we have one of the... Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, thanks. And I would say thank you, Christopher, for being here and answering and taking a few more questions from people. Thank you. Uh, the, um, the, it would not take a large amount of work to be able to convert Parabolas to use a, a GitHub app because um, the, the API versions and stuff are all, all, all up to date. It just needs somebody with time to do the work. So PRs are definitely welcome to, to enable that functionality. Um, it would just be to change to use a, like a client secret and an um, ID instead of just a personal access token. And if you want to talk to people like who are currently working on Parabolas, that would be GitHub management, Slack channel on uh, slack.kubernetes.io. If you have a PR in works and if you want review or maybe help from the people, that would be the place where you can start a discussion. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.